AWS architectures. How would you design a highly available and scalable architecture for a web application that is deployed on EC2? We will use an elastic load balancer to distribute incoming traffic across multiple instances to ensure high availability and fault tolerance. Set up an auto scaling group to automatically adjust the number of EC2 instances based on traffic demand. This ensures that the application can handle varying load efficiently. Use multiple availability zones with the auto scaling group spread across them to ensure redundancy and high availability. Use Amazon Elastic Cache to cache frequently accessed data, thereby improving data read performance. Utilize Amazon CloudFront, a content delivery network, to cache and deliver static and dynamic content from edge locations, thus reducing content delivery latency and improving user experience. What are good disaster recovery strategies for a cloud application? Our disaster recovery strategy should be based on RTO and RPO. Let's understand these terms first. RTO or recovery time objective is duration within which a business process must be restored. RPO or recovery point objective is maximum tolerable period during which data might be lost. Keeping these in mind, common DR strategies are backup and restore, pilot light, warm standby and multi-site each varying in RTO, RPO time and costs involved. Backup and restore. Regularly backup your data and configurations using AWS services like Amazon S3 and Amazon EBS snapshots. You could use AWS backup service for this. Ensure that backups are stored in a different region from your primary deployment. Pilot light. Maintain a minimal version of your application in a standby state in another region. Scale up resources as needed in case of a disaster. Use AWS CloudFormation for automated infrastructure provisioning. Warm standby. Maintain a partially scaled version of your application in another region with essential services running and ready to scale up. Use AWS Auto Scaling to manage resource scaling. Multi site. Deploy your application across multiple AWS regions, ensuring that each region can independently handle the entire workload. Use AWS Global Accelerator or Route 53 for global traffic management. How would you design a cost-effective AWS solution for analyzing terabytes of historical company data? It should allow business analysts to use SQL to query and analyze data relevant to their departments only. Store the company's historical data in Amazon S3 as a data lake. Organize the data into separate folders based on departments to restrict access. Utilize features like server-side encryption to ensure data security. Use Amazon Athena for analytics, which would allow business analysts to query and analyze data using SQL. For access control, create IAM roles that have permissions on relevant bucket subfolders using S3 prefixes. Allow business analysts to assume the relevant department role. This will give them access only to the corresponding department's data. Create an AWS architecture to deliver static content to end users from S3 with low latency. The content to be served is location dependent. That is different content is to be delivered to users in each continent. Organize the content in S3 geography wise, that is in separate buckets or subfolders. This will serve as the origins for a CloudFront distribution. Next, create a CloudFront distribution with Lambda at Edge function that intercepts user requests and examines the HTTP header CloudFront viewer country to determine the user location and based on that, switches the origin to be used. This ensures that correct location specific content is served via CloudFront. You are developing a multiplayer game accessible over web and mobile. How would you exchange game data between gamers in real time? You can use WebSockets to communicate with API Gateway. WebSockets is a communication protocol that enables a two way real time connection between a web browser or mobile app client and a server. 
or use a service like Amazon Kinesis Data Streams, which acts as a message broker, allowing clients to publish updates and subscribe to receive updates from other players, or use AppSync to publish and receive messages over WebSockets. AppSync is a managed serverless GraphQL API service from AWS. It allows you to define a GraphQL schema that represents your game data like driver position, actions, etc. Clients can query and mutate the data using GraphQL queries and mutations. A company plans to migrate its on-premise IT setup to AWS Cloud. How would you plan and carry out this migration? AWS provides several migration services to help us migrate workloads from on-premise data center or other cloud providers to AWS. Let's see how we can use them. The application discovery service helps us collect information about servers and processes in the on-premise data center. The migration hub tracks and manages the overall migration process. For a lift and shift kind of migration, of on-premise servers to EC2, AWS Application Migration Service may be used. For Database Migration, DMS or Database Migration Service is useful. And for File Server Copy and Sync of Data to AWS Storage like S3 or EFS, AWS Data Sync can be used. A logistics company wants to track movement of its fleet of trucks across the country in real time on a map. How would you design such a solution? Here's the overall flow. Every truck has a tracker device that sends its identity and geographical position every few seconds to our backend tracking setup as a JSON message. The tracking device could be a dedicated IoT device or simply the mobile phone of the driver. The fleet viewer application receives location updates for the trucks in real time from the backend fleet tracking setup, the Fleet Viewer application will plot the location and movement of the entire truck fleet on a map. This is the same flow with service level details. Location updates from the trucks are sent over MQTT to AWS IoT Core message broker to a specific topic. An IoT Core rule picks up the messages from the topic and invokes Lambda function, which in turn sends the location updates to Amazon Location Service Tracker. The tracker saves the device location with itself and generates a geolocation update event. Event Bridge captures the event and sends it to a Lambda function which sends messages to the Fleet Viewer application clients via the API gateway or WebSockets. And thus the Fleet Viewer application receives and plots the truck fleet on a map. Note that the WebSocket connection IDs are saved in DynamoDB. A company has multiple AWS accounts created over the years. It wants to bring all of them under one umbrella for better management and consolidated billing. How would you do this without disturbing existing operations? We will use AWS Organization Service to set up and manage multiple accounts. The primary account using which you create an organization becomes your management account, under which you will create organization units or OUs, which are simply a convenient way to group accounts. Under OU, you can add other accounts. These can be new or existing accounts, which you would invite to join the organization setup. Once ready, you can do consolidated billing for all accounts at the organization level. Use service control policies at organization or OU level to control what services are available to accounts under it. How would you design a system that can answer natural language queries using enterprise data stored across various data sources like S3, RDS, Jira, etc. The Amazon Q service is a good fit for this scenario. Amazon Q is an AI assistant that can generate comprehensive responses to your natural language queries. It ingests your data for processing using its pre-built connectors to augment its knowledge base. It interprets user queries, refers to its knowledge base and responds intelligently in natural language. With built-in security, the end users only see the information that they have access to. A company has several RDBMS databases of different types, one for each department. How can you build a data warehouse solution 
that aggregates, analyzes and visualizes all the department's data together. So our data sources are different RDBMS databases, one per department. We will aggregate the data in Redshift. For this, we will use DMS or Database Migration Service to replicate data from the source data sources into the target Redshift data warehouse. DMS can do ongoing replication to keep the data up to date within Redshift. Once the data is available in Redshift, it can be queried, analyzed and visualized using a BI tool like QuickSight.